Well, you know, Salim, an interesting current, uh, one of these is the uh, Miami coin. Uh, you live in Miami. Have you experienced Miami coin at all yet personally, or is it just something you've heard about? He just you know, sniffs the cocaine off the, the coin. I was talking to the mayor. <laughs> I was talking to the mayor's office. Um, and important to note, a lot of the boom around Miami is partly because we ran a fast track there uh, three years ago and laid a lot of the vocabulary down. So we have some blame in what's happening here. Um, the the Miami coin, uh, the, the mayor's office was super excited because all of a sudden they had some cash that they could uh, use that wasn't coming from taxpayers. And it was like, it was like, this has never happened before in the history of governance where we have access to resources that we can kind of uh, do what we want with. And so they're super excited by that, which is partly why they, they sanctioned it. Uh, the rest of it is fairly um, uh, questionable, in, including the fact that if I got it, if I get it right, the U.S. Constitution forbids currency other than the U.S. dollar. Am I right? So how is that going to work over time? Well, I mean, you know, if if you want, just you know, we used to have what was called M1, you know, and then there's M2, M3. Yeah. So just look, at, we're going to have, you know, a, an infinite number of M's up here. You know, and, and we've had virtual currencies for a long time. I, yeah. you know, think of LIBOR, that yep. sovereign loans were denominated in LIBOR way back in the 1980s. And I looked everywhere. I couldn't seem to find a piece of paper with a LIBOR on it. Kent. <laughs> well, I, I think, you know, we did something here uh, back in 2018. We're running a, a kind of a grand experiment of whether you can create a currency. In our case, it's called Exos, Paul. And whether you can create a, a currency that operates inside of a community privately for a period of time, pr pr prob probably growing in utility or use cases over time, uh, and then help find that currency, its path to public markets so it can trade uh, with other fungible currencies on a on a global level. We're still on that journey. Uh, we're in the liquidity seeking phase of that journey. It's been absolutely fascinating. And, and to your point about learning about money, if anybody's interested, we should, there's a, a series of books and I've not seen the one that you mentioned earlier, uh, which sounds fascinating, but the um, there's a series of books uh, on the history of money that I don't think would have ever existed uh, if Bitcoin hadn't been created. So people's awareness and learning about money has accelerated as well which is pretty wild because money's always just sort of been there. 